Hello everyone and welcome to the Warrior Kings podcast episode 4. On this podcast we generally talk about mindset, masculinity, and marriage. Today I talk to my business mentor Seth Dyer. He is a man who coaches other men, other high net worth individuals in how to maintain a long term relationship. We get into the nuts and bolts of what he thinks the six fundamentals are. We, ha- we talk about how to identify red flags in a relationship. We talk about boxing and the effect of that on your relationship and business. And we talk about the Roman Empire. So let's get into it. For the audience who, who doesn't know you yet, because obviously we have some people who know both of us. Um, for those of you who don't know you yet, do you want to give a little bit of an intro? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Seth Dyer. I'm a artist, producer, entrepreneur, lover, teacher, all kind of things. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a polymath. I do many things. But... Uh, I'm from Toronto, Canada. I was born to Jamaican immigrants, uh, which was a great time and still is. Uh, nice. And I originally come from the music business, but I have entered into many businesses and many things. So that's kind of a little brief thing about me. Yeah, solid. And for those of you guys who follow me but don't follow Seth yet, I would highly recommend you follow him. Um, Seth is one of my mentors, and he's, he's teaching me about business and just the ins and outs of like marketing and how to set up programs and all of that, all of that good stuff. I've learned a lot, and so I want to thank you officially, like on air, for everything and all the time and all the knowledge you've been giving me the last few, I think almost over a year now. Yeah, thanks, man. You you make it easy, bro. You uh, you actually implement things. That's the, <laughs> you know, that's what's key. That's really what's key. When mm-hmm. you actually like do the work for a, a prolonged period of time and then it works out, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I've definitely been seeing a lot of difference in my life because of all of that. So thank you. Um, the main questions are mainly today, we're mostly going to be around. I understand that on the side, I know you have a lot of different business ventures. But one of those biz- business ventures is coaching um, high net worth individuals and like how to have a good relationship. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering if you could go into like how you started down that that little venture route. Yeah, kind of. I kind of stumbled into it almost accidentally. I never uh, sat there and thought to myself, yeah, I'm going to teach people how to get into good relationships. But uh, I had entered a couple online communities and I had found that I actually had a skill for it. I've been mm-hmm. in a long term relationship for uh, almost seven years now, and it's been fantastic. It's been very good. And I mm-hmm. obviously have you know, experience with relationships and stuff. And I would see people mention things about their relationships. And I'm like, uh, no, that's not how you do that. Like, <laughs> if you do this, it will be fine. <laughs> you know, like, and I just noticed all these problems that men had with uh, dealing with women. And uh, I had a skill for it. And I didn't really know. And then I started helping people for free. Like I was just assisting people giving advice for free. And they would come back to me and be like, yeah, that changed everything. Mm. It's fantastic. Three months later, relationships great. Kids are great. Blah, blah, blah. So I was like, hmm, maybe I'm maybe I actually know what I'm talking about, yeah. <laughs> you know. Mm. So uh, then I then I started uh, I kind of developed a little reputation in, in a couple circles for that. And then I started like actually getting paid for it. So that's been great, man. It's taught me a lot. It's actually even made my relationship better when I, you know, cause when you teach, you also learn. Yes. So it's, uh, it's been great. I get a lot of fulfillment out of it. I, I find the things that fulfill me the most are business relationships and teaching. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's been great. Awesome. Um, one of the things that I wanted to ask about that also is, so you, you're joining these communities, you're able to help these guys who are online. Um, how did you develop the skill set to do that initially? Because I'm someone who, for example, when I was growing up, I had a lot of social anxiety. So I had to learn all of these little, like even just building rapport and asking people how their day was and having a good response for that. <laughs> like I had yeah. to learn literally from the ground up. So like, I was wondering, is this stuff you just accumulated over your life naturally or is this stuff you had intentionally studied? Like how did you come about with the skill set to be? A, mix- a, mi- a mixture of both. So I would say most of it comes from the music business. So mm. most of what I know about relationships actually comes from the music business okay. because the music business is a people business and you need people to like you. You have to know how to stand out. You have to know how to 
have conversations with people you've never met. You need to know how to have conversations with important people. Mm -hmm. You learn to develop a lot of social savvy. And for the most part, I'm a rather introverted guy. Like I, I have to like turn on the talk to everybody thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, so it was a, it was a little bit of struggle for me at the beginning, but you just, over time, if you want to make something happen, you have to meet people. So I was like, okay, I'll start talking to people and start meeting people and start networking. Another thing that really helped me out with it was when I made my first mixtape at 17 years old and I started selling that mixtape on the road. Okay. Oh. So now you learn to talk to people mm -hmm. and sell people, right? Okay. People you don't know, people who might not be interested in you, all that type of stuff. And then of course, just like experience with women. But I find that relationship dynamics are, are relatively similar amongst people in general you know mm -hmm. like there's a there's a, a nurturing aspect there's a respect aspect there's a fun aspect i find that like they're all they share certain similarities right mm -hmm. romantic relationships require some other things but business and romantic there's a lot of links between the two you know okay like a lot yeah. of overlap yeah okay that's pretty cool. Like, what a hustler! Also, like, seventeen years old and you're on the road <laughs> trying to sell mixtapes. Mixtape, man, and it was crazy. That, uh, yeah, that was a good time. Like, I had got what maybe 150 bucks to print a hundred CDs. This guy, Freddie Fame, used to print these CDs. I think it was a dollar fifty each for CD. So, like, yeah, 150 bucks I spent, and I didn't sell a mixtape for less than ten bucks. So I made some profit on that. But what I started to do is there was this girl that I had uh, done some shows with. Her name was Chelsea Stewart. Mm -hmm. And she was selling selling CDs and stuff as well. And I don't remember if I learned it from her and her mother was managing her. I don't remember if I learned it from them. I think I did. But they were like, pay what you think this is worth. And she was a great singer. So they're like, pay what you think this is worth. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try that. No one gave me less than 10 bucks. One guy even gave me 50 bucks one time in a bar. Mm. <laughs> he may have wow. been drunk. I don't know. <laughs> but he, he gave me 50 bucks. He's like, man, you were fantastic. Yeah, I, here's $50. I'll play it in the car. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, it was so, a good experience. So back in the day, I'm just, I'm kind of curious, like, logistically. So back in the day, you had these CDs, and then you'd go to a bar, and then did you have, like, a Walkman with you or, like, a CD player? Or, like, how did you no, get no, people to listen to it? To... It was when, so I would perform at these places. So I would perform, oh, and then okay. I, would sell, I would sell the mixtape. But also there was times where, like, I was actually at, like, let's say in Toronto we have Dundas Square, which is, like, our Times Square. It's nothing like Times Square, but we tried yeah. so, <laughs> so i would go there and like try and sell my mixtape to people talk to people um and yeah but it was mainly at shows like i would perform so like you see there's value here you had a good time and then maybe you'd buy my mixtape you know okay very cool yeah um going back a little bit more toward the relationship skill stuff if you had to put i, I like to ask this during my interviews because for sports, there are generally about six fundamentals you need to know to be good at it. So for basketball, it's like passing, dribbling, shooting, you know, that whole deal. Um, for relationships, what would you say like the six half or the half dozen fundamentals you should be good at in order to maintain a good long-term relationship? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'd say the first is your own personal development, like working on yourself, mm -hmm. making yourself as I'll, I can speak as a man and I coach men. So uh, making your yourself as a man a priority within mm -hmm. your life, take care of your health, take care of your business relationships, take care of your finances. It's very important that you as a man do your best to put yourself together because you're in a traditional relationship. You are the foundation. You know what I mean? Like you're the, the rock, the strength. So it's very important that you work on yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. I find that to be super important. Second, super, very, very important thing is love languages super okay. super important is love languages knowing them um utilizing them super important um i find i solve a lot of problems just with that when i talk to certain guys solve a lot mm -hmm. of problems through love languages um those are definitely two fundamentals fun is another one women hate to be bored 
Mm. Absolutely to be bored. Uh, you know, keep things fun. Don't and constantly, this is also kind of a personal development thing, but constantly be evolving as a man because women hate to think that they're with somebody that's not cool anymore mm. and no longer developing. So Chris Rock, <laughs> Chris Rock <laughs> said, he said, what do women want? People say women don't know what they want. He's like, women know what they want more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's something that'll keep pushing you because yeah. your woman's looking at you like, oh, this is where we're staying. Mm. Oh, this is where things are going to be, you know? So yeah. yeah, constantly, constantly elevate is necessary. And uh, yeah. I would say though those are important and then like the things everyone talks about like protecting providing safety okay. that type of stuff yeah right providing safety uh it's kind of actually funny you brought that up the the more thing like the i, I have a taekwondo coach who is um he's he's one of the few people i'm intimidated by because he's about my height but he's like 250 of all muscle he's like Jeez. somebody could punch a hole through a wall probably i, I wouldn't be surprised if he's done that before uh <laughs> Anyway, I walk in with my wife, and she has a she has this nice ring on her finger that I saved up for, got the ring, and he walked around, and he's like, do you know what she's going to want next year, Mr. Wee? And I was like, uh, no, sir. And he's like, she's going to want a bigger ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, man, more. And I don't necessarily look at that as a bad thing, unless the individual you're dealing with is a taker personality. Yeah, yeah. So there are some, not just women, people in mm -hmm. the world that are takers so you have to be like aware of that so for instance um i was talking to a guy one time he uh he's got his money together he works in real estate and stuff and he had put together a really good deal got some money got himself a rolex right mm -hmm. and the girl asked him so wait how come you didn't buy me a rolex i was like what <laughs> like if that's the first thing that comes to her head like instead of congratulating him on the deal congratulating him on the accomplishment or whatever where's my rolex that's like a taker element you know mm -hmm. and then he told me more about the relationship and i'm like yeah you really shouldn't deal with this girl bro <laughs> yeah yeah it's yeah. kind of that's kind of a red flag where it's not even like i'm happy yeah. for you it's like what about me kind of spiel exactly exactly yeah. so um so yeah I, I don't think it's bad that women want more out of their man. It's just as long as it doesn't come from a taking element and it just comes out of kind of like female nature. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, and I think it's it's also like, it's almost, I agree with you that, you know, in, it's definitely, even though it adds more responsibility to us as guys, it's a good thing because it's like, okay, mm -hmm. well, you should be pushing to go get more stuff. You should be pushing, not necessarily get more stuff, but to become more as a man. So yeah. that way. You know, you're uh, becoming better and better. Yeah, because stagnation just just ends things. Mm -hmm. Stagnation is what bothers people. Stagnation is when they're like, oh, the spark is gone. Because it's just stagnant. It's just the same all the time. And listen, long-term relationships do end up having routines to them, right? But you do need to, you know, inject fun, inject elements of surprise inject these elements and keep building as long as you're moving towards something together it's a fun journey yeah. right it's like i remember when we got um i got a new car recently that was like a little sprint a little journey of like yeah we're gonna go get a new car let's do it mm. you know so that uh just things like that keep growing is it jaguar or is it the other one uh, yeah 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 it's jaguar okay. i call it my panther because it's all black so oh, it's a nice car. <laughs> Thank Solid. you. I, I like it. I enjoy it. Um, okay. So those are, I guess, the six skills to keep the relationship going. What would you mm -hmm. say are red flags? Like for, let's say, cause some of my audience, some of my audience are like married guys who are trying to get the communication stuff down. Some mm -hmm. of them are younger guys who are aspiring to eventually be married. What would you say are like the ma most major red flags you see when dating a woman? Because some guys just don't know. Like oh, when I was growing up, I didn't know how to identify a red flag until it was like seven years too late. And then I was like, okay, well, right. I probably should have yeah. seen some of these coming. <laughs> like if I had known right. earlier, yeah. maybe. It's, it's, it's tricky because experience kind of teaches it to you a lot of the times. Mm. But most of the time, if you actually follow your gut, like if you, okay. have, you women will tell you things and you'll get like a, a feeling I, like, 
it sounds woo woo or whatever, but you'll get a feeling. The problem is that men don't tune into that because they want to have sex with women. Yeah. So they, don't, <laughs> so they ignore it, right? They ignore it. They don't tune into it. And then later on down the road, they always go like, I knew this was going to happen. Mm. Always, like without a shadow of a doubt, they're always like, I knew it, you know? Yeah. So hey, fo follow your gut. And uh, it really helps when you're self aware. When you're, uh, and that's where it comes back to working on yourself. It really helps when you're self aware and you actually know what you want out of a relationship. Okay. Because people don't know what they want. And then they end up getting into these relationships and assuming that the other person knows what they want and assuming that the other person is going to be or become what they want when neither party has any clue, right? Mm -hmm. So my woman and I, we have very similar values, very aligned values. So we want the same things. So it's helpful in that regard. But if people don't know themselves, then you run into a lot of problems that you don't expect. And the, and the big issue is that people assume things of one another. Mm -hmm. Right. They're like, you are supposed to be this way. But how were, how was I supposed to know that? You know what yeah. I mean? How was she supposed to know that? And that's that's where it gets tricky with red flags. But I say absolutely follow your gut. You know, you know. And when and when the event happens, you knew it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. OK, so other than that, it's situational. Like other than that, it's situational. I would have to hear someone's situation. But for the most part, follow your gut. OK. Yeah. Good advice. Yeah, I could I could see that because there's definitely a couple where I was like, oh, maybe I'll let this slide because I'm young and she's good looking. Yeah. So. <laughs> exactly. <baby. laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. And so for you and your uh, your girlfriend now, is there is the long term place to stay? Um, my understanding was you guys didn't want to get married because you guys don't want the government's hand on your marriage or mm -hmm. on your relationship. Can you explain that dynamic a little bit and the, the thought behind it? Yeah, so it just it just boiled down to values again, right? In mm -hmm. in like between the two of us we're in a long-term committed relationship basically like to us being married, uh -huh. right? And it's more it's more like yeah, I didn't want the government all in my business. Like mm -hmm. I didn't want that occurring. And also because we like to flex the way we like to flex. <laughs> okay, so wow. we went to a wedding. We went to a wedding in Jamaica the other day, mm -hmm. and we we're like, "This this seems like it costs a lot of money." And she was okay. like, "You know what? I'd rather invest that." Mm. <laughs> so okay, so like instead of spending the money on the wedding and all that stuff, it's like we'd rather flip that money into more money and build a, a better lifestyle. Okay, whatever, okay, right. I see. And we don't knock people get married. You know. Mm -hmm. It's a great thing as long as both people, you know, know what they're getting into, protect themselves and all that type of stuff. I think couples being together long term is actually a fantastic thing and necessary for society. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's all these battles between the genders that you see online, between men and women that constantly at each other's throat lately online. And oh, yeah. this is not a good thing. It's not conducive <laughs> to society for various reasons which I could get into if you want to know. But yeah, I think it's very important to have long-term relationships. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, well, I mean, we could get into them just for educational purposes because I've watched your yeah. videos and like I agree with the points, um, but not everyone, I don't have videos as in-depth as yours. So if you want to get into some yeah. of those points, so, why? That'd so be the, reason, awesome. the reason I think long-term relationships are very important is because they're important for the betterment and actual like sanity of society. So... If you roll back to the Roman Empire, there was a time when uh, basically top 10% of men were getting all the women and all the other guys didn't have access to any women, right? Okay. Because women are naturally what you call hypergamous. So they go, they date across and up. This is just mm -hmm. female nature, right? Yeah. So what starts to happen is that 90% of men who aren't getting any women, this is Roman Empire, it's a violent time in, in history. Yeah, they yeah. start offing all the top 10% guys. So mm -hmm. now the Roman government is like, okay, we're, we can't have this happen. These are some of our best people in our society, and this is problematic. So they institute marriage by law, right? Legally, you can only have one woman and you must get married, right? 
Mm. So now the 90% of guys have more access to women and your society becomes less violent, less problematic. Okay. Now, if we extrapolate that now to where we are in society now, we are actually having a repetition of what happened in the Roman Empire because mm. of dating apps. So with dating apps, the top 10% of guys in terms of mainly looks actually are getting all the women on dating apps nine and then 90% of guys aren't dealing with any women. Mm. So you run into this problem again, but the problem is you can't carry out violence upon people in society. So you get other problems. You get incredibly angry men, you get incredibly depressed men, you get men that turn into violent individuals and mm. cause chaos in society. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And this is a b in big part to not having access to women, right? Mm, okay. A man, a man without access to a woman and without emotional regulation becomes a very dangerous man, you know? So I think that couples, you know, long-term relationships and couples staying together, it might not have a, there's biological arguments to be made, but biology is not necessarily the best thing for society yeah. right marriage i think is better for society mm -hmm. and it's better for kids better for all type of stuff you know okay uh one of the i i agree and one of the nuances i wanted to kind of dive into was the when the romans implemented the law of marriage versus like one the church had instituted are you familiar with the, the how those lined up or is that around the same time no it would have it would have been different but uh, because Roman Empire is earlier than like Catholic Church, let's say, I but probably my history is not good. I gotta tell you. Yeah, but <laughs> but it's it's like I know I know from from the Roman Empire mm -hmm. story that it's extrapolated to what's happening today, and that's where yeah. I made the yeah. connection. Like, okay, it's probably better that people are like coupled off just mm -hmm. for the betterment of society because we're seeing it happen now. Look at all the men. Um, under the age of 30 who have had no sexual access for years, mm -hmm. right? Look at all the men who are involuntary celibates. Look at all the men, the young guys who have turned into, who have carried out school shooting. All of these things come from like resentment and anger and rage and these sort of things. And a big part of it is not having access to women. It's a big mm -hmm. part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. When you explained it in the video, um, that was really well done, by the way. I think I could probably just throw it down on, on the YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I have a whole, whole almost half an hour video about the whole climate of the dating market yeah. right now. It was, yeah. it was pretty well done, too. Like, the editing is good. That also kind of ties into um, one of the philosophies on the on the channel that I talk to people about is, like, stoicism and emotional regulation. Like, that stuff, yeah. as a man, you just need under control because... Yeah, yeah, I'm rereading Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Mm, it's good and, and that's like the book of stoicism, basically. And it's super important as a man. You need to learn to control your emotions because a man whose emotions aren't controlled is a dangerous individual. You yeah. know, you got to alchemize those emotions, um, which I talk about in the next realm. You got to alchemize those emotions. The emotions that you feel as a man, you have to transmute them into something else. And I learned this from music. I could go through something. I could feel sad or anger or whatever. I could write a song, record a song, put it into the world. And now it's something positive that pays me. So I've been doing this emotional transmutation <laughs> my entire life. And as a man, it's super important. Otherwise, you're going to end up doing crazy things in society. I agree. I was... Uh... I had a uh, that the compartmentalizing and the alchemizing your emotions into something good was something I used as like a teenager. Whenever I was having a bad day, I'd kick the bag extra. I'd stay after practice yeah. or whatever. I'd come into training with a lot more intensity. Just to, and it was it's weird because you can harness it to do more reps, which makes you better overall. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's kind of like a, I don't know if you have this feeling, but I always had the like when I was younger and I was dating. It was kind of like if. If I had a if I had a heartbreak or something like that, like I was gonna get good, real. Oh good. yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, I'm, I'm a heart a heartbreak away from being a world champion right now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
And then, so that's essentially that's what your plan with you and uh, your long term girlfriend. Do you have plans for kids in the future? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And like, here's the thing my mind may change about things. I might decide to go and get like officially governmentally married. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Who knows? But for, but for where we stand now, like that's, that's where we're at, you know? And yeah, kids, all of that. Okay. Everything. Yeah. Which I think is important too. Like I think having kids is a great thing. Mm -hmm. Fantastic thing. I think so. Well, I think it's also, but it's also cause like, I like, I came from a big family. Um, mm -hmm. just, being Catholic, that's part of the thing is to raise kids and bring more kids into the yep. world and then raise them and teach them and uh, pass on all of your learning. So, mm -hmm. and what I also thought was interesting was, uh, have you looked into like, I think it's like epigenetics where your your traits are more easily um, acquired by your kid? Have you looked into mm -hmm. that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, was, I thought that was interesting. And like, when you think about how many, from personally, when I think about how many ancestors i've had before me since the beginning of time i am like the culmination of all of the skills of learning it's 100 percent true it's 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 100 percent true like because i did some stuff in maybe 2021 2022 no i would say 2021 where i was tracing a lot of my ancestry and i found out a lot of things and i'm like wow this is the this this is why though i'm the way i am <laughs> you know so like i found out um, my mother comes from a set of people in Jamaica called the Maroons, which are uh, one of the few slave populations to actually fight for their freedom and win. Wow. Um, they, yeah, they battled against the British mm -hmm. in Jamaica. They ran to the hills and use, you know, smoke and mirrors and magic and they fought the <laughs> British. And the British are like, you know what, we can't deal with this. So they, they signed a treaty, left the Maroons alone and basically said uh if anyone comes to your villages just send them back and like they didn't send them back so like that's in my blood freedom you know what i mean i i get money because i have a desire to be free always mm. it was very hard for people to like contain me i didn't keep jobs very long i didn't um even my even my parents like I was out of the house all the time by like 17 years old I I, I say I, I basically moved out at 17 you yeah. know I was just so freedom oriented but I think that comes from my ancestry and then the other day I did a boxing fight and I tapped a lot into my ancestry for that mm -hmm. you know and then even things in relation to money like there's some some big business in my blood that I that I traced back my family screwed off all the money over the generations but i was like okay this individual is very rich <laughs> this is my great 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 grandfather you know yeah so yeah i actually have a similar um had similar findings not necessarily my grandfather but like so my grandfather's generation owned a lot of businesses in the philippines and then i think similar to yours uh the next generation after that there was a stepson who was adopted or something and then he was able to acquire all the land without anyone really noticing until it was like too late mm. so uh, that was a little bit unfortunate but thinking back to like uh just skills acquired is one is i am i personally am very business oriented like i i want to start trying to make businesses value etc like that kind of stems from my grandfather but also what comes from my grandfather is my grandfather was i think the top marksman in his class or something like that wicked um, wow. So that's like kind of explains why I'm super into firearms. And then mm -hmm. the, the last part, which uh, I didn't really put together until probably a few years ago was like my grand. So in Taekwondo, there's a philosophy when you're kicking off or like even when you're punching, cause you did a boxing, right? When you, when you're mm -hmm. boxing, you push off with your foot first to generate yeah. power. And with kicking, you're supposed to do the same thing where you push off a little bit before you kick. And when someone else was trying to teach me that, like I, I didn't get it. Cause when I kicked, I didn't, I didn't push off mm -hmm. and I figured out that when I kick, I use only hip flexor to generate the, the movement. So there's mm -hmm. no, there's no push off, but you need super strong hip flexors to do that. And, and then I remember my dad telling me that my grandfather was a black belt in judo where it's all hips. Oh, wow. And so I was like, it's kind of cool to see the culmination of like his skill set affecting my skill set now. It's dope. It's like that avatar show where that, where that, where, where the avatar just looks back and sees all the other avatars, you know, avatar egg and whatnot. Yeah. You know, 
That was a pretty That's good show. That pretty I like show. anime and whatnot. Mm. <laughs> uh, I actually never watched Avatar. I wish I I wish I watched the whole Bro, series. You should, man. It's a great. <laughs> the first to... the first one that that that's a fantastic show even like now for like adults it's like great okay i'm yeah. going through attack on titan with my wife right now because she hasn't seen it and we want to watch the, the last episode uh but right after that i'll get into avatar because everyone's been saying that one's really good <laughs> so to touch back a little bit on boxing because another part of the channel is mindset and a lot of people actually um, a lot of my audience actually follows me for mindset stuff i've been asking people like hey like what do you like about what's about my content like it's definitely the mindset stuff Mm -hmm. um i've been i guess in a way i was fortunate in that i was raised into fighting like i was four years old and my dad took me into taekwondo and even if i cried and got the crap beaten out of me he was like you're not quitting let's yep. show up <laughs> that's, that's how it is. <laughs> so i had to deal with that like as a four-year-old um but I, my understanding is you did your boxing fight recently um mm -hmm. fairly recently within the last year or two like what was that like for you to step into the ring and then to to generate that kind of a mindset into like this other dude's gonna be trying to punch me in the face as hard as he can and i have to yeah. punch him as hard as i, I, I have can. to punch back and, and i have to win yeah yeah you, know? you have to win um so uh, actually i was i've been in in martial arts from like a little kid i was in karate from maybe the age of like like three to maybe six and then i had a big break on martial arts and then when i was about 12 12 and 13 i actually did taekwondo mm. but after 13 years old i wasn't in martial arts anymore then over the last two three years i got um into boxing but not really like i was on and off mm. with it and then uh, i decided you know what i'm gonna do this to uh actually honor my ancestors the ones who like fought in Jamaica, the Maroons, I was like, I'm, I'm going to do this to honor them. It, I owe it to them to step in the ring. They fought for me to be here. So let me just at least prove to myself that I can step in that ring as well. Mm. Right. And to be honest with you, training for that fight was probably the most difficult mental and physical thing I've ever been through. Mm. It was hellish. It was hard as hell. It taught me a lot about myself. It made me super sharp. It made me more resilient and maybe smarter it was probably one of the best decisions i could have ever made for my life it was a fantastic experience as hellish and as hard as it was i'm grateful for every second of it i got injured i hurt my ribs both my legs were hurt wrist like just injuries through the mm. throat the whole thing but i would never trade that experience i think every man should practice some form of martial arts and at least compete or fight at least one time in life at mm. least one time because it's going to teach you so much like i remember we had to do 10k runs and i'm like man but what if he's doing 11 let me just <laughs> run 11.2 just in case yeah. you know what i mean and it just keeps you super dialed in super sharp mm. yeah so taking that mindset because you're you're a very established guy in business it mm. sounds like so you had that strong mindset you did the fight camp and then your mindset got even more gritty and robust and strong what kind of lessons did you take out of the fight camp that you're now implementing your, in your business or that you see like very tangible differences between how you did business before the fight camp and then after the fight camp yeah you can always be better you can always be better there's always something to work on you know jab cross can always get better your kicks can always get better right um that there is competition in the world mm -hmm. right and you do want to outdo them and to show up every day practice mm -hmm. you know what i mean you yeah. don't it's not it's it's uh and it's not only about showing up every day it's showing up every day and trying to do something a little better each okay. day yeah, you know, each time that you do show up, so that's uh, that's super key in terms of business. Yeah, it makes it more resilient too. So, like for instance, I ran into some problems with the bank the other day. I made a video about it, but like it going through the fight since I have some more mental toughness, it's like this isn't bothering me as much. You know what I mean? It doesn't affect you as much mm -hmm. when you are getting punched in the face every day right it makes <laughs> other problems very minimal <laughs> yeah <know>? yeah. <laughs> yeah 
So it makes other problems very minimal. It's actually something I kind of touch on, but not too heavily on my channel is like, I think as a, as a guy, just in my experience fighting, it makes all the problems seem so much smaller. Like yeah. if there's a deadline due or we're late on inventory and we're staying late for inventory or whatever the reason is, it's never as immediate as someone trying to punch or kick you in the face. Like that's, yeah. it's never that immediate. So it's like, we'll solve this tomorrow. We can take a breath. It's like, <laughs> when you're fighting, it's like, I can't take a breath. <laughs> this is gonna, yeah, this yeah. Guy's it's coming really now. Good. Yeah, yeah. It's 100% true. So I would give that a recommendation for uh, either your audience or my audience. If you haven't done a competition yet or a martial art, I would highly suggest doing it. Um, I suggest, I know some of the guys who are following me are a little bit older, so they might get a little worried about injuries and stuff. Um, but there's, there's definitely some amateur rings or some a little bit more lighter martial arts you could try testing yeah. yourself in yeah or even practice at, or spar or like spar, just even, regular sparring. sparring like even to do like sparring for the first time it was like oh man like i haven't been punched in the face in a long long time shoot like yeah <laughs> you know and uh you build up some bravery you build up some courage and you just keep doing it you know till it becomes normal i i agree and then what the even at, like, because I have a lot of, I've been fighting for quite a long time. Like, that never, mm -hmm. the nervousness never, like, leaves. Even when I, I showed you the clip of when I was at, or I don't know if you saw it, but I was at UC Davis and I was sparring mm -hmm. some guys who were, like, mildly experienced, but not as experienced as I was. Like, even before then, I was still kind of nervous. And then I was like, I fought on, like, the world stage, like, three times. Like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why I am I nervous? Before. It's the same thing with music. When I used to perform, I had done tons of performances and it never goes away. It just, it's just part of it, mm -hmm. you know. It's energy. It's just part of it. Oh, that's a good way of rephrasing it. It's yeah. just energy. Mm -hmm. and for me, I, I preach this a lot because I think part of being um, part of being a guy in a long term relationship is to show that you're emotionally steady. And so the mm -hmm. more that stuff seems small, so let's say it's not as dire as getting punched in the face. The more stuff seems small, the more cool you are overall, and like the less stuff stresses you out. So yeah, yeah, and that's key. Like your your threshold for stress will be far higher. Yeah, and like things that have her bugging out, you're gonna be cool about because if you're bugging out while she's going off, now you're in big trouble. <laughs> now, it's, <laughs> now it's double the problems. You know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Three seven. I'm like writing down timestamps as I do it. Um, yeah, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's good. I think, in terms of relationships, actually, that was that was most of the questions I wanted to ask you already, man. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, is there anything else you wanted to touch on while we're while we're still doing the interview? Um, yeah, man, like I've just, I've enjoyed talking, you know, just chatting. Okay. Um, I do, I do teach a little bit about relationships within uh, my program, The Next Realm. Mm -hmm. um, teach a little bit about relationships, but it's more, it's more mentality focus, more business focus. Has a high, high um, concentration on business, you know, because that's my what I would call my highest, like soul guided desire. I'm very entrepreneurial, very business oriented, and then um, yeah, but I do teach some relationship stuff there as well um mm -hmm. if you're interested in that i would say well just to touch on that a little bit because your community is very valuable and i get a lot of i get so i could go online and i could research stuff right mm -hmm. and it's just easy google pops it up and i'm just reading it from whoever but it's a lot different getting the information from people who have actually implemented and said i've tried all this other stuff this is the easiest one so instead of trying to figure out three or four different things it's been um, exponential for my learning I want to ask, like, how did you, um, how did you come up initially with the idea to create the next realm, and then you, if you want to talk more about like what it is inside it and what kind of stuff is in there, then a, a, fr a friend of mine talked me into it. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna do it. I was like, no, I'm working on these other things. Like, I'm, I want to chill and blah blah blah. And he's basically like, well, one, the longer you take to start, is the longer like because these things have a building time, you know, personal branding has a building time. It's like yeah. the longer you take to start is like, you're going to be behind basically. I was like, all right, that makes sense. And then two, you're doing people a disservice by not sharing and assisting them. And I was mm -hmm. like, 
Yeah, yeah you're kind of right about that too, I guess. Let me try, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so uh, I put I put it together. I put a bunch of the courses together, like, very quickly. I did it. I I launched the next Rome, created it, and launched it within maybe, like, a week and a half. Because once I have... Once I have decided I'm going to do something. I moved fast on it and I learned it from the music business because the time from inspiration to execution is key. When I hear mm. people like, yeah, we have this thing that we're going to do and it's going to take three months to like start. I'm like, why? You know, because mm. you end up losing like some of the energy and some of the initial inspiration when you do that. So I built it quickly and then I reached out to some people that I thought would um, take value from it. And then we built it up and started getting more people in. And yeah, it's great. I just like being able to assist and help people change their lives. I really thought about it the other day. I was like, you know, like, why am I doing this? You know what I mean? Why, why am I doing this? Like, I, do I have to help anybody? I don't have to help anybody. But there's just a certain driving factor that makes me want to like assist people in changing their lives you mm -hmm. know what i mean i don't know that's not to sound like higher than or whatever but it, it's just true like when i see somebody go from like nothing to something i'm like that's fantastic that's inspirational that's power you know and it's just it's as fulfilling to me as it is to them i think mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah i think, and I think a life is about what you can it's not so much what you can do for yourself, but really what you can do for other people. Because when you help other people and solve other people's problems, that's actually how you get wealth. That's how you get value transmuted to you. That's mm -hmm. how you actually move up in life. It's the people who are the most selfish that are the most poor because yeah. they won't help anybody, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's something I've um, recently come across because I've been an athlete like my whole life. And so I, there's not really much in, in a sense, it's not really much to give back because it's like, well, I'm going to go to the tournament and then I'm going to win. And then mm -hmm. I get money. It's great. <laughs> great, great. Great deal. <laughs> uh, and so a lot of my accomplishments up until like three or four years ago, or essentially when I stopped fighting, was just like for myself in a way. Like it's mm -hmm. in, a, in a way I was like winning. So my siblings have a good name. Uh, so when they want to try for scholarships, it's maybe a little bit easier for them. If they want to try for a national team, it's a little bit easier for them because I made a good impression. Uh, mm -hmm. But when now that i'm helping other coaching other guys or i'm putting out all these like fight videos for fight analysis when people write into me and they're like hey your advice really helped me in this area or because of your advice i was able to beat this guy or because of your advice me and my wife are not fighting anymore which is yeah you know, it's perfect it's great yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it is the amount Those of are the best. yeah the amount of fulfillment <laughs> i get from that is not even close to like the level of fulfillment i got from like winning big international tournaments mm -hmm. um so it's, it's interesting just getting around to that like emotional feeling now because it's like what, so what as you say that as you say that mm -hmm. i think that when you're younger you have to focus a lot on building up like yourself your mm. your skills who you are as a person your ability to make money i think when you're younger you you you're really focusing on that and like as you get older you're you're still doing it but when you get when you get a little older you actually have something to teach because here's the thing it's different to teach from knowledge and different to teach from experience when you experience something you actually understand it you've mm. been through tournaments and you've been through fights and you've been through things where you come from a place where you understand it you can give advice that somebody else cannot give mm. simply because you've been through it and you understand certain things if I was to say, hey, Chris, for 10 years, just learn about fighting, like just study it on the Internet, watch it, learn all the moves. Right. But you don't have to step in the gym. Just learn about it. Me, I'm going to go to the gym for 10 years. OK. And mm -hmm. then in 10 years, we're going to have a fight. And what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's experience that allows you to actually understand things and experience is how we learn right mm -hmm. and it doesn't always have to be your experience you can learn from other people's experience but either way that's the best thing to learn from because that has all the nuances in it 
And that has the little information that you're not going to get from the guy who's just reciting it from the book, mm -hmm. you know? So when you're a little older and have actually been through some things and actually experienced things, now you can actually help people. You know yeah. what I mean? I see some guys who are like 16 years old running podcasts, trying to teach men. I'm like, what do you, you don't know? What are you talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I, good for them for starting something. But I'm like, you're 16. Like, mm. You don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And speaking of that experience stuff, what was interesting was it, it, I'm not sure if this is a free course or within the next realm, but the the treasure chest where you just mm -hmm. give like it's like 60 or 80 nuggets of information. Yeah. Um, I remember because I, when you're speaking, you can tell it's from your experience that you're giving this knowledge. And yeah. usually when I'm listening to a podcast or a book and I'm in the car, it's just like I'll play it and it's like, da, da, da. OK, this is pretty good information. Da, 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 this is pretty good information. Like I remember specifically for that one, I was. I, I got almost frustrated because I had to pause it for so long, have my have a voice recording and take a note of it and then keep playing it. And then like two seconds later, I was like, okay, pause again, write this down because this is really good. <laughs> keep going. It was like it was a good frustration because there's a lot of good information like that you dumped in there and it was um and there's so much of it. Like uh so yeah, that was the treasure, the treasure chest, uh, unlock the treasure chest is free. The first fifty lessons are free. And okay. then I add to it. So like the next realm has 10 extra lessons, mm -hmm. but then over time I'll be adding to it only for the next realm guys. Um, but the first 50 lessons are free for people. So y'all go check that out. It's free. Yeah. I would, I would highly, highly suggest it. Cause there's a lot of little nuggets or nuances in there. And I think if I hadn't started a business or if I hadn't started trying to do business, I might not value the information as much, but now that I'm doing it and I'm struggling, I'm just like, okay, where's the next thing needs to come from? Or what's the next step for this? It's like, oh, and then and this piece of information and this piece of information, I tried this already, so don't do that. This is the next piece of information. It's yeah. like, holy cow, <laughs> it's yeah, a lot yeah. of good value. <laughs> yeah, it comes from it comes from making a lot of mistakes, but then, but then, figuring out the right things to do. And that's how it goes a lot of the time, you know? Like I said, learning from experience. Because even with music, like I made a lot of mistakes. I made a, I made a lot of uh, foolish decisions. And then you learn from them in order to elevate yourself. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So like, for instance, um, there's a lesson I have, use what you got, right? Use what you have. Because I remember making music. I'm like, oh, I need the best equipment. I need this microphone and blah, 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 blah. Well, there was people with like far cheaper equipment who were putting music in the world and making money. And I'm like, hey, over here, like I need $10,000 speakers. And I'm like, that's nonsense. Use what you have, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And then 40, who's Drake's engineer, he said, use what you got. He mixed a, a freaking platinum selling album in his headphones and for people in music who might not be your people but who for people who are in music for him to do that that's uh, ridiculous it's unheard of so he mm -hmm. used what he had yeah yeah um lastly before we we head off um i want to ask what what initially got your interest into music was it something when you're a kid or how did you initially step into that world because it seems like you stepped in that world and that has branched into everything or a lot of your life now yeah yeah so i was always a creative kid um uh, when we were in when i was in kindergarten which had been like around the age of four or five years old we would have to have we would have to do an assignment like draw a picture and write a story about what the picture is. And I would only draw the picture. I don't write a story. <laughs> <you know? laughs> so I would just draw the picture. And, and uh, yeah, I was always creative. My my family also has music in it. In my grandparents' generation, a lot of them were in the orchestra in Jamaica. Mm. So, you know, that's some musicality there. And um, since my grandmother, like, because she's from that generation, the orchestra generation, she had a piano in the house, right? So me as a kid, I'm like, I want to play this. I want to play this. And I'm here knocking it and all this. And my mom's like, look, I'm going to put you in piano lessons. I did piano lessons for six years and absolutely hated it. <laughs> absolutely hated it. To where my, I complained about it so much to the point where my mom's like, okay, fine, I'll take you out. And after she took me out, it's like my mind went brain dump, take it all out, gone. Oh, I wow. forgot everything to do with piano. I was like, I no longer want this in my mental space. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to high school, 
I somehow picked up music again. I was so I was just looking up like beats on the internet. And mm. I started seeing how like people made these and I'm like, hey, I want to do this. I had to reteach myself piano, right? And make music and stuff like that. And then actually getting into music and making my own music. I talked to someone about, uh, about this the other day. I wanted people to listen to me, mm -hmm. not just music. Like I had a big problem with people not listening to me in general. And that probably has something to do with my childhood or something. I'm not exactly sure where in terms of my childhood it might stem from, but yeah. I wanted people to listen to me. And I thought music, if I get great at music, then people will listen to me. And it was a sense of uh, like validation and importance, mm -hmm. you know? So I think that was a big driving factor and just like pushing in music so much, but now people listen to me for other things. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. Well, Seth, thank you for being on the show. Um, before you head off, what, what are, what's a good channel to find you on? Um, you can plug your YouTube and then next realm stuff. Or... Yeah. Yeah. My, my website is where you can access the next realm. So Seth Dyer.com that's S E T H D Y E R.com. You can access the next realm there. My YouTube is at Dire Days, D-Y-E-R-D-A-Y-S. And then I'm always on Instagram, which is Seth Dyer underscore. So, yeah, that's where you can find me. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time, Seth. I learned a lot. And we'll see you. I guess I will see you on a call tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank, you, thank you for having me, man. I, I really appreciate it. And I, I like what you're doing. This is, this is fantastic. This is great. So I appreciate it, man. Uh, thank you.